Oysters play a really important role in their ecosystem. They help clean the water of the bay by filtering out phytoplankton from the water. Oysters build reef structures like a coral reef. And that structure is like a mini city and provides a home for a lot of other species to live. Submerged aquatic vegetation is an underwater plant that is different from algae, different from seaweed because it has roots that attach it to the bottom. And submerged aquatic vegetation, or we call it SAV, is really important in the aquatic environment because it's habitat for a lot of different species that we care about and it also can help filter the water. Shellfish have a calcium carbonate shell and ocean acidification can affect how they make that shell. A thicker shell is gonna be harder for an organism to get in and open them up and eat it. So we see as the environment becomes more acidic, their shells become lighter and they have less calcium carbonate. Ocean acidification can actually help seagrasses and SAV, submerged aquatic vegetation, because in some cases, they're not getting enough CO2 or carbon dioxide to support photosynthesis. And so ocean acidification can actually help some seagrasses grow better. And ocean acidification is so bad or detrimental to so many organisms that live in the ocean and the coastal environment that the benefits that it can provide to some seagrasses are far outweighed by the negative consequences that it has for clams and oysters and other microscopic organisms that we really kind of depend on. In the coastal zone, we have very high biodiversity. So there are a lot of different species and they all depend on each other. So one species doesn't exist within a vacuum. So when you have a small krill or shrimp that is impacted by acidification and that that population isn't growing, the different species that feed on the krill are also gonna have trouble finding food. And if they can't find food, they can't grow. And if they can't grow, the species that consume them, like larger predators like sharks, seals and sea lions, they're gonna be impacted. So the average person should care about acidification for a couple of reasons, and one being food availability. The ocean provides a lot of seafood for the U.S. and a lot of jobs. Economically, it's about 1.7 million jobs and over $250 billion. Anyone who is going out into the water to either farm or harvest animals that we consider shellfish, that is going to be impacted. They're gonna have a harder time doing that. Ultimately, what that does is it makes it so that a major food source, a protein-rich food source for a lot of people is going to be less available. There are lots of community level actions that you can take. So the first thing that we want people to do is try to reduce the amount of watershed runoff. So how much water is falling onto land and getting into our waterways. The less CO2 that we're putting into the atmosphere, the less CO2 will be absorbing into the surface ocean. SAV and seagrasses can actually improve the conditions locally that are detrimental under ocean acidification. So when they're photosynthesizing, they're taking carbon dioxide out of the water. And so that's basically the opposite of ocean acidification, which is an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the water. And so the pH then also increases, which makes it easier for organisms like clams and oysters to build their shells. I have a lot of hope about the future. There's no denying that humans are fundamentally changing the chemistry of our coastal waters, and we need to reduce our carbon emissions to reverse that. But oysters are surprisingly resilient to coastal acidification, and that gives me hope.